Fidel Castro spent more time visiting Europe's former communist East than the West, but he was also an iconic figure for the left from Lisbon to London. Obviously, his influence during the 1960s and the 70s cannot be underestimated. Uh, mostly as a popular culture figure, he was a sort of, um, um, if you want, a symbol of the new left, the non-aligned movement, which had a very strong grip, actually, especially in Northern Europe. But after decades of economic mismanagement, even much of Europe's left began to view Castro in a different light. And maybe a dinosaur who didn't really understand why the sun wasn't shining anymore. And uh, it serves primarily, perhaps as a lesson, to many uh, people who are, or political leaders who are committed to political orthodoxy, that not even the greatest or the worst ideas can basically revoke the laws of economics. So for Europe, Fidel Castro leaves behind a mixed legacy as this anti-imperialist, this symbol for uh, the leftist struggle, but also as a man who was too stubborn. Perhaps he would be viewed a, a bit more uh, in the light of a man who used a powerful rhetoric uh, to defend a system that had, fair enough, uh, had, had pretty much failed. Um, and thus, he might be more viewed in the light of Hugo Chavez rather than, say, Cesar Chavez. After the Cuban Revolution, Western Europe maintained trade links, trading a more pragmatic path than America. But EU-Cuba relations did improve further after Fidel Castro handed power to his brother Raul. Particularly after 2008, uh, since Raul has come in, uh, it's liberalised even further, so there's less strain on the relationship, uh, probably from 93, but extremely much more so since 2008 uh, between Europe and uh, Cuba. Though he outlived his enemies and most of his friends, here in Europe, Fidel Castro will be remembered mostly as the man who failed or was unwilling to keep pace with the times. Jack Barton, CCTV, Brussels.